a better example would be something like a night capital, right? Of course, you can lose a lot of money very quickly. That is a failure with the sandbox that you should be operating within. And it is completely irrelevant to the explainability of the price you were using in that given point in time. It is a strict falsehood to say that you need to understand what the model is doing, that it's just not true. Um, I would disagree with Peter. Um, explainability, I think, is the core of finance. Without it, you are not doing finance. You're not doing quant finance. I think you're just kind of gambling. Um, but we'll see deviations. But if something blows up, I mean, LTCM always comes to mind. Like, how is that going to be explained to the public? So as the AI models become more and more sophisticated, uh, they also become less and less interpretable. And this creates a real challenge, especially for, you know, smaller firms. Uh, they, they cannot afford a compliance mistakes. So what best practices exist for ensuring explainability uh, and uh, robustness? They come with many scars and, and years of uh, internal model review processes and large banks and that kind of thing. And I sure as I wish I had an LLM to generate those documents at the time. Um, not to mention, keep them up to date with uh, changes in code and uh, automatically generate tests and, and so on and so forth. In some ways, it's a, it's a gift uh, to people internally faced with any kind of kind of model bureaucracy. It's uh, LOMs are an amazing weapon. I think it's incredibly important to uh, bifurcate the problem. It's silly to think of this the one kind of regulatory problem. If you are making a large number of systematic trades and the, the P&L loss on any given single trade uh, is, is not going to uh, you know, blow up your firm or make a material impact, um, and you can measure that uh, you know, sequentially, um, then there's a fairly simple application of the triangle of inequality, which would suggest that as long as your model is within epsilon of some other model, which is well understood, you can bound the material risk of your model. And it is a strict falsehood to say that you need to understand what the model is doing, that it's just not true, right? It's mathematically false. Um, you, you need to bound the model risk separate from other material risks. And you can often do that if you're in a, an algorithmic trading context. A better example would be something like a night capital, right? Uh, of course, you can lose a lot of money very quickly uh, um, if you have uh, stale code, et cetera, et cetera. Something goes wrong in your system. That is a failure with the sandbox that you should be operating within. Right? It is completely irrelevant to the explainability of the price you were using in that given point in time if that price is bounded by epsilon. We are not a trading company, and uh, so I would probably not be very correct if I talk about the regulatory concerns about anything related to that. So I, I don't feel like taking this. Uh, I can say that in some cases it is very well uh, appreciated by some clients where if we can explain, give them a feeling of what the model is considering, like uh, models that allow you to understand, uh, you know, feature importance, so just to be very, very simple. And so what are the, the data that are uh, most influencing the decision of the models is something which is uh, very relevant. Definitely these models uh, have uh, enabled even a single guy to implement from scratch a whole pipeline that goes from the data to the final strategy and so on. Uh, typically, what is recommendable, according to my opinion, is that in terms of the data, pipeline should not be left to a single guy. I mean, even in the small companies, there should be someone accountable for data and the coherence of the data and the data quality. And from that, you know, you can source the data into strategies. But the temptation is, since you can easily do a lot of things now, a single human does the whole process. And that could be risky in terms of quality, in terms of uh, overlooking some pitfalls and so on. Being on the risk committees and meeting with federal regulators at a variety of institutions, um, I would disagree with Peter. Um, explainability, I think, is the core of finance. Without it, you are not doing finance. You're not doing quant finance. I think you're just kind of gambling. And to your point, there are a lot of big funds that are doing that. Uh, but we'll see deviations, right? You are bound by some model, and it seems reasonable. But if something blows up, I mean, LTCM always comes to mind, a common example. If we see some sort of giant deviation, we have large losses. Like, how is that going to be explained to the public? How is that going to be explained to the government? Because, I mean, they're not finance people. They don't understand it. And typically, we get hit with regulations after we have a public issue. 
I mean, imagine some big fund does that and it explodes. Um, I think regulation is lax right now, given our political environment as well. So I think hedge funds are running for the hills right now trying to capture on that. But I think we will see a swing back once something kind of blows up. The regulation will follow, of course. Regulation will follow with the lag compared to what's there right now, right? With the changing in uh, AI landscape. For example, uh, here in India, uh, Sebi is asking uh, stockbrokers uh, who are using uh, any form of uh, AI models to suggest trades to their customers. Now, they've still not yet gone down the route of uh, asking to explain this, but uh, that will come down at some point of time, right? Of course, trading firms need to have like some form of uh, AI governance policy, skills, which is etc. Uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. You also have to look at the data egress fee, right? That you're using public available model, uh, you have risk of data leakages, etc. But once you set up a decent enough scale, then you have to start looking at that.